Hello and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lars Moser. I'm with uh, the automotive group at Westlake Epoxy. And today I would like to give you some insights on phenolic composites and how they are delivering thermal runaway performance for battery enclosure applications. But before we get into the topic, let me tell a little bit about Westlake Epoxy. So the business that I guess many of you know as, or used, used to know as Hexion Coatings and Composites is now Westlake Epoxy. And just a few facts on Westlake. Westlake was established in 1986 and went public in 2004. We are headquartered in Houston, Texas in the United States and have around 16,000 employees globally. We maintain offices in 23 countries and have manufacturing sites in 13 countries. On the right hand side, you can see an overview of what Westlake is doing and how the epoxy business with its main applications such as wind power, aviation, automotive, coatings, nicely fits into that. And with the advent of the epoxy business, Westlake created two divisions. One is the Housing and Infrastructure Products Division with the related businesses, as you can see on the left-hand side. And the other, where we as Epoxy Group belong to, is the Performance and Essential Materials Division. We might be new to Westlake, but we have a long-standing history in thermostat technology. And the roots of our heritage companies go back more than 100 years. Just to name a few, Borden Chemical, Bacalite, and Shell Chemical. And, and these businesses have been combined in 2005 with uh, some more to form Hexion Specialty Chemicals. Uh, and uh, then the next milestone was in 2012 with the opening of the Transportation Research and Application Center, the so-called TRAC, which is located in Duisburg, Germany, uh, with a clear focus on fast-track development of um, innovative lightweight composite materials specifically for the transportation sector. And this uh, subsequently uh, led to a, a qualification at the major German OEM in 2017. And as of April 2022, Westlake acquired what, uh, uh, the entire Hexion epoxy business forming now Westlake Epoxy. So now let's get into the topic of phenolic composites and their application in uh, battery enclosures. So why is this important? Just look, with 108% global sales growth in 2021, the electric car is more popular than ever. And at the same time, China and also other geographies following are introducing stricter FSC, so flame, smoke, and toxicity regulations or requirements on the EV battery enclosures to ensure passenger safety in case of a fire. So the challenge now is to have materials which are cost competitive and delivering the performance, not only in fire retardancy, flame retardancy, but also, of course, on the mechanical uh, side. And uh, we are convinced that composite materials are an ideal solution to these challenges. Let's first look into the requirements for EV battery enclosures. Well, it's not only one or two or three, it's a whole array of requirements as we can see here. And um, these can be grouped in, in fire retardancy requirements, of course, mechanical requirements as it's an integral part of the, of the, of the body of the car. Um, also uh, light weighting, and then there's obviously also electrical requirements. And in order to deliver a good performance to be successful in the application, it's really important to, to meet all of these requirements in the best possible way. And looking closer into the application, we can see that a battery enclosure typically consists of substructures. One being the so-called battery tray, which kind of carries the battery, bears the load, 
and the battery cover, which kind of shields the battery from the uh, passenger compartment. So um, we kind of see a trend that for producing the battery tray, OEMs select fast cure epoxy systems, uh, which are used with uh, flame retardant additives and processed in liquid uh, compression molding. With using that technology, using that route, due to the continuous fiber format, excellent mechanical properties can be achieved. And using the LCM process, high volume economical, uh, highly economically pr uh, production is possible, that, uh, as even no preforming is required. And uh, Westlake developed a material solution called the Track 6170 system, which is ideally suited for this application. But now let's move on to the battery cover, which kind of protects the passengers from the battery with its incredibly high energy density. So here, the mechanical requirements are not as high as for the battery tray. And so, but on the other hand, the, the, the shapes are more complex. So it's, it's more getting a challenge in Continue, uh, in uh, moldability of complex shapes. So for that reason, the SMC format is ideally suited. That uses a chopped fiber, uh, for fiber format um, with excellent moldability, with excellent flow, uh, and the option to incorporate continuous reinforcements if needed. We have been developing a material system which is the Eponol 6921 system uh, ex uh, especially for this application. And that system consists of four components. So obviously the Eponol Track 6921 phenolic resin system. And this will uh, get combined with our patented acid catalyst technology with the Aperture Track 6921 catalyst to so kind of cures the system. With high volume production in mind, we also incorporated an internal mold release agent, which eliminates the need to apply a mold release after each and every molding. And in case that's needed, we also have a, a black pigment in the portfolio to make the parts black. And uh, this system, as it's a phenolic system, has a unique set of properties, and just to name a few, it's inherently flame retardant. And this is really important. It's inherently flame retardant. That means no fillers whatsoever are needed to achieve the excellent uh, flame retardant properties. It doesn't contain any styrene. And it's ultra low in formaldehyde. We'll come to that in a, in a minute. It can be processed on standard equipment. So that means there's no need to make additional investments in order to process or to compound that material. And it, it, it exhibits excellent mechanical uh, performance as a high glass load can be, can be utilized because no fillers are needed. Molding times will be in the range of two to three minutes depending on the part thickness. And well, apart from that, it pretty much behaves like any other SMC. So let's stay a minute with uh, EHS topics with formaldehyde. Um, many people have the perception, probably from decades ago, that uh, phenolic systems will have a high formaldehyde content, which is not the case anymore with the newest technology phenolic resin systems. And in the tab, you can see an, uh, a number of countries and the respective limits for formaldehyde exposure. And in the blue box, you see the results from our worst case testing during our compounding test measurements. Um, so that was, as said, a worst case scenario. And still, we were only uh, measuring one tenth of the strictest value we have observed here. So that really shows the problem has been addressed. And um, formaldehyde is, contrary to the past, not an issue anymore. So now let's move more to the application. So what, what can be done with that material system? So um, it offers 
a unique combination of high mechanical performance due to the high glass load can be filled up to 60% glass. And that combined with the excellent flame retardant properties and FST properties is, is a very appealing combination. Being polymeric, there is no issues with corrosion. And again, it can not only be compounded on existing machinery, it can also be uh, compression molded, or processed to be more general, on existing presses. As said, free formaldehyde and free phenol uh, emissions are ultra low, and the system has an excellent low behavior, behavior again due to the absence of any fillers. So how does it compare to standard chemistry? So um, standard chemistry, polyester, vinyl ester, or other SMC systems are not inherently flammable. That means they have to be uh, filled with uh, flame retardants, in many cases ATH, aluminum tree hydrate, which just brings a number of challenges from the mechanical side, from the processing side, um, and also from the light rating perspective. On the flip side, with phenolic SMC, this problem doesn't occur because there is no fillers needed. The system can be highly filled with glass, exhibiting excellent mechanical performance and uh, with proper design, um, cost competitiveness at the part level and reduced weight is achievable. In addition to the mechanical performance, the fire retardancy performance is really key for the application. And globally, China has the toughest FST requirements, um, but other regions are following. So it's not that it's only relevant for China. We see a global trend kind of harmonizing using, using the Chinese standards. And there's two cases which are important here. On the left-hand side, you can see the so-called bonfire, which is an external fire attacking the battery from the outside. And you can see the testing numbers or the, the standard numbers uh, in the box. And the other case is the so-called thermal runaway, which is a fire inside the battery. And there the, the passengers have to be protected from the fire which, which uh, attacks the battery from the inside. So here you see a quick overview of these tests. On the top, the external fire, the bonfire. On the bottom, the, the internal fire. And it's important to bear in mind for the slides to come that for the bonfire test, it's really a question of, of uh, maintaining the integrity of the enclosure and um, having a self-extinguishing performance so that the, the part just doesn't continue to burn us. Uh, many polymers would do. For the internal fire test, it's important that the components withstand the load for at least five minutes. So five minutes was defined as kind of the, 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 the time that should be given to the passengers to, to escape from the vehicle. So let's start with the bonfire test. This is a uh, battery box from a legacy EV. Uh, which was molded using our phenolic SMC system. This is the system, how it looks uncolored, just out of the mold. And here you can see a quick overview, some snapshots on the bonfire testing. So you can see a pan full with gas or petrol, which is lit, as you can see here. And the enclosure pretty much just sits inside and gets burned from the outside. So here you can clearly see some signs of, of fire, but didn't continue to burn. It maintains its structural integrity, and it would still protect the battery or the cells from, uh, from the environment. The thermal runaway testing has a little different setup. Uh, you can see this is done with kind of a bench top testing. So there is uh, a gas torch, which you can see at the very bottom of um, of the image here, and the testing article is placed vertically just in front of, 
of uh, the gas torch. And there's two different protocols or two different versions of this test. The protocol A is pretty much a fire exposure of the test plaque. So that means there is a torch at 1600 Celsius and uh, this continues to burn until there is a hole observed in the panel uh, which will define uh, the time. And this then can be used to calculate a couple of, couple of, of properties later on. The protocol B is combining a thermal load with a mechanical load. So that means there is a gas torch at 1400 degrees C for, 20, for 10 seconds, which is followed by a sand blast. So that's really an abrasive mechanical loading on the part uh, for 10 seconds. And then there is another 40 seconds of gas torch at a lower temperature at 800 degrees C. And this cycle is, is, is repeated until um, a hole is observed in, in the panel. This is really a very critical test because it kind of combines two different loads, the thermal and the abrasive test, and uh, well, you will see it in the, in the coming slides. Again, the target in both tests is, is to reach five minutes. So let's start with the protocol A, which we have here on, on the video. So the gas torch is lit, and uh, the panels are sub uh, subjected to, to the fire. And we tested different mat materials. So one is cast aluminum, which burns through after like 30 seconds. Then we have ATH polyester, which uh, shows better performance, but withstands for roughly 100 seconds. And then on the right-hand side, we can see uh, the phenolic uh, material which exceeded the testing time without a failure. We simply stopped the test because we were not able to burn a hole into it. After, I think, six seconds, and we had some more tests with even longer exposure times. Now, let's look at protocol B, which, again, features the different materials, materials uh, aluminum uh, as the first material. So you can see the first cycle. Then you can see the, the sand blast as it shoots onto the surface and then the gas torch again. Same materials, aluminum, polyester filled with ATH and uh, phenolic material. And well, cycle two, there's already a hole in the aluminum. The ATH polyester holds up stronger. So the second cycle you can see is, is almost completed and the, the phenolic as, as well. But in the, in the third cycle you can see that um, the ATH filled polyester also showed a hole, and for that reason, the test was stopped. For the phenolic material, you can see we have five cycles completed, six cycles completed. And here in the seventh cycle, there was uh, a hole observed, but again, kind of just positioning the phenolic material to other materials which are in use for battery enclosures, just showing the extraordinary performance of this material system compared to competitive materials. Uh, here, a quick overview uh, in some images. Um, from the front and from the, from the rear side, this was done at a slightly lower temperature. And uh, just replicating the result we have seen earlier, that cast aluminum and ATH filled polyester were holding up for a certain time, but were not uh, sufficiently in performance to, to uh, withstand the full five minute cycle. Phenolic SMC exceeded the required time by far, and uh, we could not observe a hole here. For the protocol B results, so for the combined thermal grid blast or sand blast and thermal impact, we observed that the cast aluminum uh, was, was um, okay for one cycle, but in the second cycle we saw already a hole. The ATH filled SMC or polyester performed better, but still not up to the requirements of so five cycles. So five cycles would be five minutes, as one cycle is uh, exactly 60 seconds and phenolic uh, really delivering the, the performance here 
and surviving six cycles. And this extraordinary performance in fire retardancy can be combined with best-in-class mechanical performance. In the first column, you see typical mechanical properties of phenolic SMC. And uh, on the very far three columns, you see two standard poly uh, SMC material systems and aluminum. And in almost any property, the phenolic SMC excels. And just in case that there is some design planned where this will not be enough, this material can still be combined with UD reinforcements based on phenolic resin. So that means you could even locally reinforce the phenolic SMC with uh, some UD fibers and uh, end up with uh, a load adapted geometry really enabling high light weighting quality and, and uh, low, low density, low weight. For the battery enclosure, it's really key to, uh, to have a look at the property retention. Here we see uh, a comparison of phenolic SMC and ATH filled SMC in the puncture test. You can see the test standard at the bottom of the slide. Um, the three lighter ones were tested before fire exposure and uh, the darker ones were tested after fire exposure. You can see um, before fire exposure, Phenolic SMC and ATH fill SMC were pretty much on par, but after the, the fire exposure, there was still a good portion of um, property available at the phenolic SMC material, but no integrity at all for the um, standard SMC formulation. So also here, um, very, very appealing and, and interesting properties for the phenolic SMC. So this leads me to the, to the summary of my, of my presentation here. And I would just like to give you three key take, takeaways. Phenolic SMC offers a unique set of properties, a unique value for automotive applications, specifically for the battery enclosure. It meets the most stringent EV battery uh, enclosure requirements and complies with China's toughest FSNT standards. I would like to thank you for your kind attention. If you would like to know more, if you would like to discuss, if you would like to see the, uh, some parts molded with such a material, please come visit us at our booth. It's just down that corridor here at G52 here in Hall 6. And uh, we have, I think, time for a question. So if there's any question, um, I'd be happy to answer that. Thank you very much. There's a question. Thank you very much. Um, uh, obviously, sustainability is a big thing, especially in automotive. What does the end of life look like for phenolics? Well, phenolics, well, we, we take, of course, that, that question seriously. And, and we currently uh, observe that topic. So it's a bit too early to, to talk about results. But that's something we, we, we have in focus. And for sure, we'll, we'll come up with some answers, I hope, relatively soon. Thank you. Any other question? OK. Then I would like to thank you again and wish you a good rest of the day. Thank you very much.